Well, hey guys, I have a big audio score to talk about. Let me tell you the story here. Well, my computer decides to give me blue screens all the time. Heck, it might even do it just sitting here. I did a bunch of stuff. I ran a memory test and even changed the memory out. A check disk. Uh, let me see here. It's a kernel data in page error, so it could be anything from a virus to memory or bad sector or something on the hard drive. Ran everything, and uh, you know everything seems fine. I ran virus scan. I don't really do anything with this computer. I haven't changed anything, loaded anything. You know, I use it for work and YouTube. So I'm careful. I, I don't do anything with viruses. I don't download stuff. So yeah, it started blue screening me. Well, the problem is, uh, I like to build my own machines. I built one for my dad. Um, I use this Ryzen. AMD Ryzen. Just a basic processor. A lot faster than what I have. That 7233 is the... Uh, pass mark score for it and it's pretty good my machine's only 1900 so it's a lot faster well figured i'll just build a new machine well back then i paid 94 dollars for this i think it was that was a year ago well guess what they want 174 dollars for this thing now almost twice the price so yeah I decided I'll just buy a used computer. So I found this computer store. And we have this little machine here, 220 bucks. Uh, seems decent enough. Eight gig of memory, terabyte drive, uh, Core i5. It's supposed to be a newer core thing, Core i5. I have to check the pass mark on that one. Uh, it seems to be up, up to date for what I need. I'm not really a fan of Dell or anything. Like I say, I like to build my own, but I just need a holdover for a year or two. Uh, with the computer, he threw this guy threw in uh, this realistic amplifier. So all of that for 220. And I asked him if he had any audio deals. I said, oh yeah, I have some stuff in the back. So he uh, showed me this thing for $40. And uh, looked interesting enough. Then he had a bunch of uh, scrap stuff that was going in for recycling. So that's what we have here. He just gave me all of these amps. A bunch of Pro Audio amps. This is a Denon here. It's one of these big fancy. Let's see, is there a model on there somewhere? Yeah, how do you get into this thing? And it's one of these digital controlled, you know, rotates forever. These knobs, it's all digital encoder stuff. I'm not crazy about these receivers, I don't really care about these. Um, it's a high-end one, though. 330... No, no, no. What is it? 33,000 microfarad caps, I think that is. Yeah, this one's bulged a little bit. Uh, I don't really care about this. It, I might get parts out of it. Yeah, look at the size of these heat sinks. Yeah, I'll see what's wrong with it. And uh, down here, let's look at this one here. It's Grom's Precision. It's like a PA amplifier, yeah, 70 volt system. We run through a, the building speaker system for paging and stuff. Uh, down here we have this Apogee. I'm not sure what this thing's all about. I think it's just an amplifier of some sort. Again, uh, this works. Uh, the rest of the stuff don't work. The Radio Shack amp works, though. 
He gave me all the stuff that doesn't work. Look at this. We have a... Looks like it came out of a church or something. Choir. Mon. Looks like a two-channel PA amp. Yeah, two-channel power amplifier. And we have this Carver something or other. Equalizer. A Nyko. It doesn't work. I'll have to see if I can see what the problem is with it. Then we have the uh, upside down PV. 600 watts by 2. And look at this. Radio Shack. Another receiver. I, like I say, I don't care much about these digital late model type receivers. Started in the 80s. This is a, that's a real volume control though. And over here we have this Crest Audio. Another PA type amp. Guy said these things, these PA amps aren't really that valuable. The uh, audio crowd wants to go for the high-end home audio type stuff. The vintage. Look at this thing. I don't know what this is. Looks like it's a home build amplifier. Look at these ancient RCA hybrid amplifier packs. It's kind of weird. So they, uh, it's not even tied down. Yeah, I don't know what this thing's all about. I'll have to take a look at that. So, yeah. A bunch of audio stuff to tear into. I uh, might see if I can fix some of it. Uh, I'm going to get parts out of some of this stuff. We'll see. Maybe make some videos on some of it. But yeah, it's a big audio haul. Thought I'd pop the top on a couple of these, see what's going on. So this is the Ramza, which turns out to be Panasonic. I didn't know Panasonic was into this. Panasonic Power Amplifier WP9110. 150 watts per channel into 4 ohms, 300 watts bridged into 8. It says here, one of the channels works and one is out. Right is out. This might be worth tackling. I'll have to, uh, you know, check it out. Could just be the relay. I've seen the relays, dirty relays on these things. You know, take out the channel. All you do is clean the relay and it works again. But, you know, I don't know what's wrong with this until I dig into it. This thing here, I get a standby light for a few seconds and it goes out. It doesn't turn on. And, like I said, I, I don't really care too much about this thing. Could be simple, I don't know. I might tackle this as one of the first things. And, uh, let's pop the top on this 600-watt uh, PV amp. Well, here's inside the PV. This is why it's so heavy. Very modular design. This is one channel here, and I pulled this other channel out, so very small heat sink, so they're relying a lot on uh, con uh, convective cooling, or uh, forced cooling, I should say. So yeah, it's not a lot to it. Looks like they're using op amps. I have to look at those part numbers. So, I have to see which board is the bad board it says one channel out here is 
Look at that fan in there. It's a big fan. A bunch of stuff I had to unplug. Look at that right there. Stands out like a sore thumb. That resistor is annihilated. That one looks like it got hot. What else? I'm going to have to look at it closer. So this is definitely the bad board. The nice thing is I have a good board to compare it with. So I can see what value it is. Let's see here. It's the one, two, three, four components over from this connector. This is the output. Look at that coil there. So, there's the connector. So it's this orange, white, brown it looks like. That would be three nine, 390 ohms. So where does this go? I'm not going to fix it now, but I'm just kind of poking around. Where is it? Where did you go? It's hard to look through the viewfinder, and but I zoom out, that'll help. Okay, so that 390, it runs over to that transistor there. Emitter, probably. And the other side, where are we? The other side goes to okay I'm back come on give me some focus looks like it connects to what would that be the base I think it's the base I think they're using one of these transistors as a driver then we have one two three four outputs on each side so we might have a zapped transistor on this board or transistors I guess I don't know I'll have to dig into it more so yeah this might be something to look at unfortunately this more modern stuff the, the transistors are soldered in isn't that lovely so yeah that's uh, another amplifier for you well, the last one I'll take a look at here is this Optimus brand Radio Shack receiver. AV receiver. It's kind of weird. It doesn't have surround. It's just left and right A and B speakers. Unless I'm not seeing something here, but... It's got a surround button. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe it sends surround audio to a second amp or something but uh, it's plugged in we have a standby I heard a relay click another relay click that means the amp is probably okay no display whatsoever probably something I'm not gonna monkey with because I don't really like I say, I don't really care about these receivers much. But I might have a poke. Real volume control stops. It's not a digital thing. And we got a little uh, equalizer here. Looks like the computer brain is alive. It's changing. I can hear relays click. Just no display. Might be uh, burned out or something. I don't know. I usually keep going and just get dimmer and dimmer. 
But yeah, that's the Radio Shack. Dusty is all get out. This is a neat little carver amp. Might have to, uh, that might be something to repair. And what's it say here? It says that needs fuse to test slow below 12. So, yeah, it might be bad. It could have a shorted transformer if the main fuse went out. I don't know. But yeah, it's enough of this. I got plenty to play with. I got lots to, uh, I got tons of videos I want to make. Got some news on the JAT 501 amp project. It'll be coming up. And uh, that'll do it. Oh, I should mention, I don't have a P.O. box anymore. Well, the end of May here. May 31st is it. I mentioned in a little note, a little message I posted. I don't know if everyone saw that, but it's just getting too expensive to have a P.O. box now. Inches up every year. Started out 41 bucks, and you know now it's uh, 73 bucks to have a PO box for six months. So it's just getting out of hand. So I decided to do away with that. Well, that's it for this. Thanks for watching.